Hey, this is Ben with Measure Quick, and with me today is Doug Larson, who is the service manager for a medium large HVAC contractor in Burnsville, Minnesota. So they have about 47 technicians, and they have just spent the last year on a Measure Quick journey. So going from zero to 100% Measure Quick adoption. And they've reduced their callbacks. They've increased their ticket sizes. They have made their technicians happier technicians because they got less paperwork to do. I just want to talk to Doug a little bit today about the journey that he went through to get there. Maybe a little bit of what's next for Gens Ryan on this journey. So thanks so much for joining me today, Doug. Thanks for having me. All right. So can you tell us your name, your company, and what do you do there? Why do you choose to work at Gens Ryan? My name is Doug Larson. I'm with Gens Ryan Plumbing Heating and Air, and my role is the Director of Operations. I choose to work at Gens because we like to be on the leading front of the new technology coming out. We're usually early adopters of the latest and greatest when it comes to our equipment, our practices, the technology we use to help help our customers. Um, the other big part about Gens Ryan is we're 100% focused on customer service. Uh, every seat within the company is focused on our customers. It might not always be the customers in the field. A lot of the office side or support staff, our customers are our technicians who are there and supporting our customers. Um, a lot of the mindset here is you know, 100% focused on the field team because if they're set up for success, our customers will have the best service they can possibly have. Yeah, that sounds like a great place to work for. It sounds like you do a lot of work to enable your team to be successful. That is our number one driving factor. Why do you do what you do? What motivated you to get into HVAC in the first place? To get into HVAC in the first place, I've been in, in the industry for 20 plus years. Um, I started in HVAC more specifically about 10 years ago, and I, I just fell in love with it. Uh, I was an installer. Uh, at different at a different company back back when I was first starting, and it came natural to me. All well, the technical skills, the, the relationships with the customers, diagnosing it just it came natural. And from there, I was with a company that wasn't very focused on the technicians and setting them up for success, which kind of just lit that driving factor in in me to work my way into position where I can be a, a benefit and a resource for that field team. And changing the script to making it all about the technician versus maybe necessarily what's best for and easiest for the office. And how did you stumble upon Measure Quick? So our owner, John Ryan, he was at a, a networking conference um, and just happened to meet the right people. Came back all excited, um, glistened in his eyes, and I've got something I want to run with. Gave me some, a brief high-level elevator pitch on it. And within two months, we found that there was a technical training course. Myself and our instructor went out to Ohio and learned all about it, the ins and outs, how to run it, how to pitch it, how to use it within a company and brought it back. And we just fell in love with it from that moment on, especially being a technician myself. I instantly was after it was just I wish I had this when I was in the field. The amount of late nights I spent at one o'clock, two o'clock in the morning on call, I had no idea what direction to go in. Obviously, right, my managers weren't answering. They were asleep. And the customer was just sitting there staring at me. And I'm like, I, I don't know. And I saw it instantly as a tool where it's like, if one of my technicians never has to be in that situation, then it's 100% worth it. And maybe as a quick aside... Have your technicians been in those situations before? And have you seen a shift since adopting Measure Quick? Yeah. So we've actually been running Measure Quick for about a year now. Um, a year ago, we had a full on call service, started introducing Measure Quick, and we implemented it with our newest technicians versus rolling it out with our more experienced technicians. None of those technicians that are brand new, they just went through five, six month training course with us, a bunch of ride alongs. None of them have been in the field past six, seven o'clock at night in the last year. So they've never been stuck out. Our calls are a little bit different. We just have shift rotations. We've got a late shift guy and an early morning shift technician. But before that, there are several times where 
I was getting phone calls and running out to customers' homes to help out at midnight, 1 a.m., 2 a.m., which thankfully I haven't had to do in the last year either. It's amazing. And, and it's not just the time loss, but it's all that stress that comes along with it. Yeah. I've been in a similar situation when I used to work in telecommunications field work. Oh my gosh, having that feeling where you're letting yourself down, you're letting the customer down, you're letting your company down, and the answer could be right there. And you just don't have the resources to connect the dots. Yeah. And it's usually the simplest thing. And it's the one thing that you overlook because you're like, I know I've checked it. And then it's always that simple thing. So just that reminder tool where it's like, yep, did you check this? Did you look at this instrumental with new graduates? And why did you choose implementing with the new grads versus your senior techs? We started off young uh, with our newest technicians to get a base. Um, to run the numbers, it's also easier to train someone in on it that doesn't know much about the industry, right? They're new into the industry, so they don't know any different. They're not setting their ways of, this is how I run my call. Yeah. We started it with them just to make sure it was the right fit for our company, right? And obviously, we took it, ran with it, and now it's our entire service team has switched over and is using it over the course of about a year. Our, our new students in... About two to three months, they were running full tune-ups using MeasureQuick inside and out every call. Our service team took a little bit longer because, again, we're breaking breaking that habit. We're breaking their stride, their comfortability, and saying, hey, we're going to do this things a little bit different. So we rolled out to them. It also gives them someone that can also go and ride with and train. Not only when our new students are right along with these technicians and training, they can now also help train and be like, Hey, here's the tools I'm using. They can run the process. Our service team can then see how it works, see the success, which then instantly got them more interested in wanting to use it as well. Because they're like, these new guys are running with it, finding a bunch of success. They're having fun. They're in and out of the house a lot quicker than I am. And then it was easy to just start steamrolling that through the rest of the team. That's really cool. So it some people try to use the stick approach, carrot versus stick. Some people try yeah. to use the stick where it's, this is policy. We're just, you just have to do it because I say so. And you guys use the carrot approach where you demonstrated that it actually is enjoyable and fun, mm -hmm. but then you also showed that now their calls are, are shorter, probably less hectic and more efficient. And then does that mean that they get done uh, th their day earlier? They get to go home earlier as well? A lot of our technicians are ending right at the eight, nine hour mark uh, day in and day out. So they're sitting right where they're comfortable with a couple hours of overtime every week, but they're no longer having those burnout weeks where they're 50, 60 hours because they get stuck on one call for 10 hours. With that culture change is usually one of the hardest parts for adopting something as significant as measure quick into your company processes. Mm -hmm. And oftentimes the culture change, there's almost like a, there's an activation moment, often one or more activation moments that then start building momentum to turn into the culture change. Do you have any do you know when that moment would have been for some of those guys? We kind of had two different activation moments from their company, right? So our first activation moment was with our Jack Moran Academy graduates, so our new technicians. For them, the activation moment is, right, our instructors being super excited, very positive about it. Here's this really cool new tool. You guys are the first ones to adopt this. We brought this in just for you, right? The activation moment there was based off the technology and then showing day after day just sitting in our training lab, running through classes and things like that, their technology, their technical advancement far surpassed the class before them. So they recognized it right away and ran with it. Because now all of a sudden we were rigging furnaces and ACs in the back to fail and they were catching it. And then they already know where to start to go instead of us being like, okay, now that you see this fail point, you have to go do this. They already just had the resource right there and just ran with it. And we were able to had a lot more self-paced study into our Jack Ryan Academy because of that, because now they're just teaching themselves using the tool. And because of that, it's self-invested and they're learning quicker and faster. So we're seeing actually that activation time wow. was great with new technicians. With the service teams, our existing technicians, the activation 
time. It, it was rocky for a few months there. Just like you said, they're transitioning. It's different. It's this new thing. We've got, we got all the common objections, right? You're trying to take the technician also to being technical and being a technician, right? It's making us be more sales driven and look, right? Customers don't see value in it, all this kind of stuff, right? Because they had a negative attitude on measure quick because it's different, right? Change is always scary. Their activation moment came when some of them started finding success. So we just took a couple aside and that were interested in it. We got them the tools and just worked with them on every call. So they had a call coach here in the office that was just with them on every call. So they were live feeding through measure quick. They were running through their call, looking at pictures, going back and forth. The call coach has a little bit more of that sales mindset. So there's someone that's been with the company 16 years. They know the technical, they know the service, they know the sales, they know the ins and outs. And we were able to partner them up. And after a technician was in a call, they had their head down, they were grinding away to not finding that success. And these call coaches were able to step in using measure quick and show them like, hey, Present it to the customer this way. Use it as a tool. Here's what I found. This now confirms as a secondary independent source. Here's the readings. What would you like to do today? Giving them that report card with the customer. But also, it took setting the agenda with the customer early on. Talking about, hey, we've got this cool new tool that we're trying out. It's going to run through your system, and it's going to help me diagnose this system for you today. So we slowly learned over time. The different verbal packaging we should use and at what points throughout the call using these two technicians. Then once they started getting the rhythm down and finding success and they went out on their own, they became within the top five of all our technicians in the field systematically over a few weeks. Every week in trainings, a large part is we're like, hey guys, here's where everybody's at for last week. Here's the order. And they just kept noticing that these guys were always at the top and naturally that competitive nature took over and they're like, how are you guys finding success? And then it just fell in place for the rest of the team. Yeah. Because I have a secret. Yeah. <laughs> it's measure quick. Now let's talk about callback. Were you tracking your callbacks before? Did you know what that percentage was and has it shifted since you adopted measure quick? Callbacks actually used to be a pretty just accepted part of of our company to the point where we even had a full-time guy that was hired just to run callbacks. You're the callback uh, guy. <laughs> so his, his entire job is we were out here, fixed this thing a couple months ago. It's not working again. Right. He goes back out and helps get it going for a business. That's not really sustainable. If you're paying people and then as you continue to scale, if we have one guy running warranties, that's basically at a net loss for the company. Uh, at that point we had about 25, 30 technicians. For every 25, 30 technicians, we now have to hire another warranty guy at a Ben Wasp just to go behind these technicians. Over the last year, we haven't seen any callbacks from more recent things to the point where we actually were able to just eliminate that position uh, because we've been able to effectively reduce our callbacks in a significant amount. A lot of our callbacks before were on simple things. So we'd get the information back and it would just be like, oh, gas pressure was set too wrong. System's now overheating or fan speed wasn't set, right? System's overheating or not cooling. So now the coil's icing up after their visit. Left the door panel off the AC or minor things that add up, but then take no extra time to solve. Once we've started using Measure Quick, we've noticed a lot of that stuff has stopped and our callbacks have drop dramatically when it comes to the craftsmanship side of things, right? We still see, obviously, the manufacturer warranty parts. That part's never really going to go away. We're in a mechanical industry. Can't solve that. But our now craftsmanship to manufacturer warranty percentage is has flipped from what it used to be. So now we run almost 10 manufacturer warranties, so legitimate warranties for every one kind of craftsmanship issue, whereas before it was about 50-50 split. Wow. So... Essentially, a 90% reduction in the call callbacks that were self-inflicted. Well nice. done. And that definitely has an impact on the bottom line. That poor callbacks guy, hopefully he's doing something more enjoyable now. You know, poor girl. Doing, he's having fun. He's running service again. He's no longer yeah. having to step aside from going out and helping people. He now gets to 
like I still go out and help people, but now with front end service versus being the guy that comes in with his tail tucked between his leg, being like, Oh, hey, we're back. You can yell at me now. Okay, I'm here. <laughs> oh no. Yeah. Great for him. That affects the bottom line. The other elements of the bottom line, a lot of companies use Measure Quick for sales for kind of comfort consulting. Is that something you've integrated into your process as well? And how does that look for your company? Now we're at the point where it, it's required on every call that we run, run measure quick. So both the furnace and for the AC. What that looks like is technicians go in, they do the whole explore and greet step. Why am I here? Get into their diagnosis while they're talking to the customer. They're going through putting the probes throughout the house, throughout the system as Customers going through, hey, here's what I'm experiencing, and getting to know that customer at that same time. We're setting the agenda, showing them just a cool tool, how we're hooking it up, what's going on, talking through the process of what we're going to go through for about the next two hours while we're here. Throughout that call, we still have call coaches that are part of every call, but now instead of just running a couple of guys, they're running full teams, eight to 10 technicians at a time. And uh, so they're able to triage. So the triage is, hey, here's the customer. Here's the relationship I built with them. Here's some information on them. Here's the difficulties they're experiencing. And then here's our grades with MQ. And now the call coach is uh, taking that, running with them, being like, okay, let's build some options. Looks like they've got uh, some issues with gas things. Here's three different options we can build here in economy, you know, mid-range. And then here's a premium to, if they don't want to have get everything redone at the same time. So they're in there helping with the sales process. So it, it drives our sales process. We're in the middle of trying to link all of our price book line items with the measure quick faults that come up. So then it just gets even easier and more streamlined. So now every time it's just, you see this flag on MQ, this is the line item that goes in your option. That is a fantastic idea. Does measure quick, like when it comes to your competition, does Measure Quick help you stand apart? Do homeowners like know that you're a Measure Quick contractor? And does that, do you find or do you believe that makes a impact on their decision-making process to go with you? We're still at the point where we're changing the industry, right? We're the early adopter. We're getting the word out there with every new customer that we meet. So it's hard to say at this stage, because it's so early, if it's given us a competitive edge. Uh, but that's something as it gets out and more people hear about it and see it, they'll start to expect it and it just becomes more towards the norm, right? Just like any other technology out there. Yeah. And so in two years, three years, I think 100%. Once enough of the population out there knows about it. Wow. In the short term, it's definitely helped. Everywhere in the United States had the hottest summer on record except for Minnesota. We stayed at 70 degrees all summer. We stayed at 70 degrees all winter last year. And so in Minnesota, it has been the hardest year in HVAC history across the board. Yeah, that's so, like death for most HVAC companies. <laughs> yeah, you go six hours away to Chicago, it was 100 degrees. And we can't even get a 90 degree day here in Minnesota this summer. Because nobody so needs it, HVAC. We've been in the perpetual year of nobody needs HVAC, um, which has been its own struggle enough. Through some of that networking and things like that, our technician's average ticket is higher than anybody else in this area. Our closing rate is higher than anybody else in this area. Even though we have a company ending season that has taken you know a lot of companies down uh, throughout the last year just because it's been so hard, we're seeing our statistics and our stats and our growth continue to go up. And that's probably not just measure quick. It takes a huge amount of work from everybody involved to weather that kind of storm. I think having measure quick, having that report um, and introducing that has been a large key as, as well as our, our coaching strategy or implement strategy um, that came along with it. But there's still, still a lot with measure quick to explore. That's the one thing we, we realized day in and day out. But some of our guys, we've now got two dedicated uh, full-time guys that are just dedicated to MQ within the company. So part of their jobs and their duties is they're going through, they're testing different test modes. They're finding ways to help um, streamline, improve, make it a little bit more efficient, especially when it comes to some of the electrical testings and things like that, which is usually the hardest part because at one point you need three hands, but you only have two in order to do some of the tests. And so 
they're just working through some of that stuff right now to, and just helping speed up our guys. We went from it taking technicians about two hours on average to now they're running a full MQ in about 30 minutes. Now that we've got the efficiency down, we get to start playing and exploring with the rest of and all the other features that we've just put a pin in for a little bit. <laughs> That's amazing. Do, are those team members and yourself directly connected to all the folks that measure quick, like Joe and Jimmy? Yep. So one of our team members, Andy, he's our, our Jack Ryan Academy instructor. He was the one that was out uh, in Ohio with me. So he talks with Joe pretty regularly and Jimmy as well. Awesome. Our other guy is more the field guy. So he takes everybody else that's already in the field and help answers questions, troubleshoots, gives advice and things like that throughout the calls. If you had any advice or tips for techs that wanted to first start and create value with Measure Quick for their company, what would you tell them? The biggest advice, and it's the advice that I've been giving to my technicians over the last year, is it's always frustrating changing a process, starting something new, getting to know the new tool inside and out and things like that, right? And I would always compare it to when you get a new phone, you always miss your last phone because your last one was set up and you knew how to navigate it to work all the features. But you're excited for the new phone because you're like, oh, look at all this cool new stuff I can do. But if you get frustrated and you don't keep exploring it and you just leave it as the basic, you're not going to use it 100%. So keep push through that and just keep exploring it, keep using it, try different ways of bringing it up with the homeowner, try different ways of utilizing it. And when you find success, just repeat that. It's not going to work 100% of the time with 100% of the customers. Our goal is right, 50, 60, 70% of our customers out there that it connects with, it resonates with. But just because it doesn't go right the first time doesn't mean it's not going to go right again and again. But find where you're finding that little bit of success, keep that stable, and then just work on the next little bit. And eventually, you'll have a process and a flow throughout your call that is just natural. Maybe advice or tips for somebody either in your shoes or in the shoes of uh, the owner, the leadership of an HVAC company. How would you encourage them to explore and create value with Measure Quick? The biggest, I think the best advice I can give is find a technician that, that believes in what Measure Quick can do and the idea of Measure Quick and how it can help them day in and day out. You find a, the right technician or two technicians to help create the process, find the success within your company. They're willing to put in the work and adapt their call style and work out if you say this or bring it up at this point or use it in this way. And you get them up and running 100%. Once they're at the top of the list, then it's easy to bring that to the other technicians. Uh, you got to realize it's going to take time. It took us about a year to get it fully up and running. And even still, we have hiccups. And there's some days where even our top technicians just, they're like, I don't want to do it today. Then they don't find success because they're used to that rhythm. And then the next day, they're like, okay, I get it. Use Metric Quick today and I'll find success. And even after a year, we're still having some of those conversations, still trying to get techs engaged 100%, using it every time. Um, and you just got to realize it, it's a huge change, especially with experienced technicians. They've been running the same process. Some of our guys have been doing the same thing for eight years. It's hard to change that habit of how you run a call after eight years um, because it took you eight years to build up to that point. Um, just know it's going to take some time. Um, there, but be patient, be encouraging. If they're not finding success, take the time to talk to them and try presenting it this way. Give them a little bit of direction, nudge them in in the right place of how do you, they can utilize it better. That's amazing. And it fits well with your earlier advice to techs because mm -hmm. if you tell them to play with it and accept the struggle, to have that support from the top makes such a difference in them being able to get to those points of success that then they could grow. Awesome. So do you guys do probe kits? What, what are you outfitting your crews with? It's a great question. And I'll, I can actually send you some pictures of how we set it up. But basically all of our technicians, we've got um, a hard case that holds all of their tools in one place. So they can just walk in basically with a briefcase and all the tools are lined up, ready to go. It's got all the hand tools they need, 
right in there. So the screwdrivers for taking the doors off and all that kind of stuff. The Allen keys for getting into your gas valves. And it's just one kit. So they just carry the box around, set it up, and then they're off to the races, right? And so a lot of our technicians, we do a tool loan program. So we'll front the cost by tools for our technicians that if they need or want. So MQ being one of those kits. And we'll let them just pay it off so much each paycheck uh, until it's paid off. But that way they can get the tool today and start running with it today. So with that setup, took it slow, a few people at a time, a few more people wanted to get on, a few more people, and then pretty soon everybody had their probe kits. Did you do the full nine probes? The full, yeah, nine probes. Awesome. And do you use the Trufo grid as well? We currently don't use the Trufo grid in the field. We run it in our lab just to help teach guys about static pressure and airflow and things like that. But it's one of those big things where unless we're going to a call where we think we need this out in the field, our guys are welcome to rent them out and bring them out into the field and then just return it back later if they're really okay. wanting to expect something. The the grid is huge. It takes up a lot of room in the vans. Yeah. That's a yeah. In the future, it might be something we roll out, but it's one of those things we reserve for special cases or and if guys want to try it out, um, they can rent it out for now. Maybe if you could give your own perspective on what Premier Services are and also what qubits are, because those are two terms that are specific to measure quick and might be a bit strange when you first start with them. Yeah. Basically, qubits, internally, we call it in-game currency. Because that's what it comes down to, right? It's transferring U.S. dollars to something you can use to unlock more features. If you compare it to a video game, which maybe the owners don't know as much because they probably don't play as many video games, but all the technicians kind of understand. We load them up with their in-game currency and they're able to go out. We have chosen to unlock the premium feature on every house we go to. What that is, is it's five qubits a year and you get unlimited access four reports for that home, no matter how many times you go out. So the premier feature, what it does, and what our level of customer service that we like to provide is we do the benchmarks, we hit set points, we give the printouts to the customer, email it to them. And it's nice to be able to, when if a technician goes back out uh, for a warranty call or they were out there in the spring and now we're out there in the fall, we're then able to take that previous report and the new report and be like, Hey, your system is still at 100%, just like in the spring, everything looks great. Or, hey, Mr. Ms. Homener, in the spring, your system was at 100%. Now we're down to 75%. Looks like some things happened, but don't worry. I put together some options for you. Let's get you back up to 100% by the time I leave today. How's that sound? And so we chose Unlocked Premium. That reason alone is we now have side-by-side -side comparison for our customers of their system before and after the service of the same day, but not only that, but their spring service as well as their fall service. Do you also take advantage of the uh, remote streaming ever? That is something that I have found invaluable. Before, I used to have to get in the vehicle or my field managers get in the vehicle or our team's technical captains would have to get in a vehicle and go out to a technician to figure out what's going on because... Very few people can see pictures or just get a list of, hey, my temperature is at this and this and be able to fully diagnose it without being there and seeing it. Because it's a game of telephone between the repair and then you're like, there's some detail that's missing and nothing's quite making sense of what they're telling you. And so it just, it gets hard to help diagnose and troubleshoot over the phone. What this has allowed us to do is we can now see every test that's being run on the furnace. We can see exactly where the temperatures are at where the electrical voltage and currents are at, and just see how the overall systems are forming. At the same time, we're able to see the flags. Even just with that, I'm able to jump in there quick or our captains, our technical support. We've also given access to our manufacturer representatives that are our tech support. So that way when our technicians are in the field and tech support can even be a better resource for them. Now, anybody that is there to help our technician has all the information they need and live feed. So even as you're like, hey, can you adjust this? And you're able to see that go up real time it has been invaluable. And just the amount of time, frustration that it's saved of 
oh, we can't get someone out there for a couple hours, so just keep figuring it out or, you know, sit on hold with tech support or this or that. Any of our technical guys or anybody in the field, their peers, other service technicians, call coaches, captains, managers, we can jump in uh, and give real-time advice, monitor the progress as they go. It's one of the best features, and it's the main feature that I was excited for when I first learned about it. I was like, this alone is the greatest tool that you can have to support your field team. And do you also use the CRM integration at all? Do you use House Call Pro or Service Titan? We use Service Titan, yeah. So, it, yeah, we're fully connected in, and the guys watching the calls, it'll instantly tag, hey, MQ is complete. They know it's ready. They're almost up on deck. They should start helping build options, looking through the photos, all that kind of stuff. But it has also helped our customer service team on the back end. People call back with questions or, hey, you know, I got this quote a couple of days ago. I had some questions. They're now able to jump in and be like, oh, yeah, it looks like this and this was going on. And they're able to help our customers more on the front end versus, hey, let me get the answer for you and call back. So now we're able to provide that just a little bit better customer service. The, the more we get into it in, in the years to come as we refine our processes, that's just going to keep your own and growing. Yeah, the, the, you're taking full advantage of the paradigm that Jim's been trying to integrate and bring to people like yourselves so that you're never searching for information. You're never entering in information twice. You're never uh, getting incorrect readings or scrambling to try to look at inside gauges, outside gauges, like what's happening before the system uh, state changes. Every single one of those is time and money and resources that get wasted. So it's just so great to hear that you guys are taking advantage of all of it. One of the cool side effects of, of using Measure Quick is I'm sure any technician listening will know that the number one job of being a technician that sucks is all the paperwork. The amount of times you have to write down, here's the recordings I got, here's what's going on and all that kind of stuff. Now it's just a report that automatically uploads to the job. And then the the entire form our technicians have to fill out is, hey, give me these 20 pictures. Just go along with the MQ report. So the amount of time what used to take some technicians 15, 20 minutes to do all the notes at the end of the job is now when they're when they walk out of the customer's house, they're done. Paperwork's all done, it's ready to go. We were telling the story earlier about how a tech decides not to use measure quick for a day and then they kick themselves afterwards because really all it is, it's an automated way to do data entry and collection so mm -hmm. that you don't have to deal with that existing pain of every day of either completing the paperwork after a job or not completing the paperwork at all. And then not having it when you need it the most during the next call or when the customer yeah. calls in and... Yeah, it's just automating those processes for everyone. Yeah, just take my goal is to take as much headache off the technicians as possible so that way they get to do what they enjoy, right? Which is being a technician. They don't care about paperwork. That's what I care about in the office. I, I shouldn't have to have them care about that too, right? It's finding the advantages in the places where we can eliminate as much stress, headache, and trouble from that team. So they're happy and they can just focus on the customer and being a technician. Doug, thank you so much for your time. This has been amazing learning about the journey that Gans Ryan has been on and uh, all the work that yourself and your team have done to adopt Measure Quick. It's not easy, but once you're on the other side, it's clear that you guys had a lot of fun while you were doing it and you are way more productive and profitable than you were before. So congratulations on all that. And I wish you the best on the next part of your journey here. Thank you. Can't wait to see where this goes.